Chariot of Life, Liberation War, Politics and Sojourn in Jail, authored by Dr. taufik e ilahi Chaudhary Beer Bikram, narrated by Mohsena Hassan. Dedicated to the living and the dead, the young and the old, to whom I am immeasurably indebted. Forward and Acknowledgement This book is based on facts that I have seen, heard and in some instances kept notes on during the time it covers. Instead of getting into a philosophical or metaphysical debates on what is a fact, I would crave the indulgence of readers to take it as a modest attempt, as an observer to narrate happenings around him over three and a half decades apart. Having made my case, I would still admit there could be inadvertent errors in respect of time, place and events mentioned in the book but I hope they did not impair the essentials of the narrative. I do not know how to acknowledge when the list of people I am indebted is so countless, but then it is customary to do it in a book to re-emphasize the social nature of all human beings. I grew up, like most others, in the care and affection and support of grandparents, parents, uncles and aunts. They taught me, though I might not have lived up to their expectations, to embrace the world with humility, compassion and dignity. My siblings were both sources of joy and competition till we parted our ways in life, with some for good too early. Besides the upbringing in the fold of the family, I had many teachers. In school, among friends, and one in particular in the family. To all of them, I am indebted immensely. As a young man, I got involved in the war of liberation with thousands of freedom fighters from all walks of life, my friends during the finest hours. We were inspired and led by the Pied Piper who captivated us with the dream of independent Bangladesh, ignited fire in our hearts and souls. Bongo Bundhu, with whom our war became synonymous. Many of my comrades in arms were killed or wounded in action, while many others passed away later. I have avoided mentioning them specifically, except for a few, to give the accounts some anchors, since I do not remember all their names. No excuses, though, for my failing memory. Most of the accounts of the war in the book are thus written, for we, since we did it together. To Bangabundhu and his followers, I can only pay my tributes. For serious inquiries of history, I would recommend the documents collated in Bangladesh Shadinata Judher Dolil Patro, in bracket, History of Bangladesh War of Independence Documents, 15 volumes, edited by Hassan Hafizur Rahman and published by Hakkani Publishers. 1982. The incentive of putting together my personal account for the war came first from my father-in-law, poet Joshimuddin, who thought I had treasure chest of interesting experiences to share. To his disappointment and that of my wife, who had sacrificed days immediately after our marriage to give me time to write, the first attempt was aborted. Though encouraged by well-wishers and friends, I could not get down to write for another three decades. After retirement from public service in 2002, I made some attempt to put together my account of triumph and tragedies in fits and starts. This attempt was interrupted as I was incarcerated in 2008 on trumped-up charges along with the former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina since I refused to give false testimony against her. Unlike the Liberation War, I started keeping detailed journal during my time in prison. After my release from jail, I tried to make a book out of my journal and had given the draft to a publisher who thought 
that my experiences during the liberation war were more worthwhile as a book than the account of my incarceration only. I was disappointed. Then I thought of combining the two since my period in jail roughly coincided with the war over three and a half decades back and the experiences during incarceration were in contradiction to my expectation out of life. Since this, the compilation of two accounts in one. I have used assumed names for all my cellmates to avoid binding them to my account of their life in jail and allow the privacy they may prefer. My ability to use Microsoft Word determined the language of the book English. Also, the new generation of Bangladeshis home and abroad who unfortunately have very little amity with the rich mother tongue could get glimpse of the country, its legacy, ethos and history through this modest work that encompasses three quarters of a century, although I have occasionally gone back to a millennia. My wife Asma, our two daughters, Duli and Mridula, and their husbands, Fahmi and Ahmed, gave me constant encouragement to finish a book that has been long overdue. According to them, our seven-year-old grandson, Rodur, wanted to know his nana's spoils in the liberation war. I could not let them down. I owe them the final push to a lazy member of the family. Professor Monzurul Islam suggested that Said Bodrul Ehsan edit the manuscript and the latter instantly agreed. I kept sending the drafts to my editor as he traveled abroad, busy and writing books, lecturing and fulfilling his journalistic responsibilities. Modern internet connectivity was a great facilitator. My editor not only did the laborious work of editing, but also encouraged me to complete the book with occasional compliments. Without his involvement, the book might never have been completed. I am immensely grateful to Said Bodrulesan. My gratitude to Said Gausul Alam Shaun of Grey Advertiser who enthusiastically undertook to do the cover design. I sat with Bibikanando Joydhar for reading proof who did the job with a smile under the prying eyes of Zia and Mehdi. My assistant private secretary Muktadir Aziz provided valuable secretarial services assisted by Sanaullah and Morshed. They deserve thanks. Robin Ehsan of Srabun Prokashuni took the challenge of bringing out the book in record time to catch the Ekushe Boimela. This book could not have been published otherwise. To my detractors, my best wishes, inadvertently though, they let me have a first-hand view of the forbidden world. My wife Asma shared the roller coaster of my life with an abiding faith in me, though I often let her down. Without her sacrifice, this book would have remained a memory only. To discerning readers, I rest my hope on their forbearance. Finally, the acknowledgement of the obvious, yet more importantly than any other, my profound gratitude to God for the gift of life. I owe everything to Him.